I just wanted to take a special moment to just thank the team, Coach Rick, all the staff. This was an amazing challenge. I have learned so much, so much of knowledge, um, life-changing moments, giving opportunities, new books to read on this journey started in 2023. So I just want to thank all of you for all your hard work and dedication to bring this to um, all of us, to bring this to myself. So I am just so thankful and appreciative of being able to be in this challenge this week. And then just one takeaway from the family reunion that went home for me was the part how coach Rick stated that he was the Moses. He was the Moses that helps us stop drowning. And then we become the Joshua's that helps others to stop drowning. And then we teach them how to fish. And so the call of action for myself after this whole financial challenge was one, to get my immediate house in order, me and my husband, looking at this opportunity together so that we can go forward. And then also reaching out to my parents who I love dearly and so thankful for all that they've done to the level and the capacities that they could go. And then explaining and sharing this information with them. And then reaching out to my young adult children so that they have a better start in this financial wealth journey. And then reaching out to friends and other entrepreneurs that I know in my space that do not know this information. This has been a life-changing event. I am so thankful, so grateful for all of you that are doing the do. And I want to be a part and continue to be a part of this journey, learning, growing, developing, and doing the work of the kingdom and getting kingdom blessings. Have a wonderful day. I'm Dr. Beverly Allen. I am more than 50 and loving it. The aging is insufficient finances. And around those fears are a fear of retirement. Some of us are afraid that we won't even be able to retire. And if we do, we'll be, uh, will we be able to maintain our level uh, or our standard of living? Some of us are even afraid that we may slide into some level of poverty. The second fear uh, around those insufficient finances is that of bankruptcy. Will we have enough money to last throughout our lifetime? Okay, and then there is a fear of not having a legacy, not being able to take care of our family in the future. There's a, um, there's a, there's a solution. Okay. Recently, I had the opportunity, the pleasure, the blessing uh, to attend the Financial IQ Challenge. And it was hosted by Mr. Rick Williams. Uh, Rick was a really funny man. He just kept us laughing the whole time. It was almost like being at a comedy show. Now, he kept us laughing, but he was serious and he was sharing some truths. The, the generational, um, I'm sorry, the uh, financial IQ challenge is really about uh, creating generational wealth. Um, and that's uh, a lot different than some of us think. Uh, first of all, uh, most of us view wealth from a view of prosperity. Yes, prosperity is wealth, okay? However, it's limited. It's limited to you, to your immediate family, and it may be passed down as far as your grandchildren. Okay? Generational wealth uh, comes from another perspective, that of posterity, okay? It is unlimited, and all your future generations are covered. Okay? There's one thing that we do know, that you cannot create generational wealth uh, through a job or 
savings in your savings account. Okay, so if you are really serious about your personal financial position and that of your family, if you are really serious about creating generational wealth and legacy for posterity, then you must take the financial IQ um, challenge. Uh, besides, we all should be lifelong learners. We should be learning something new every day. And if you learn, uh, uh, if you choose to take the financial IQ challenge, then you'll be learning some of these things. Uh, um, you'll learn about wealth principles from the Bible. And we've been taught a lot of wrong stuff about what the Bible says about wealth and being rich. And then you'll learn about common law and statutory law. Did you know that if you don't know your rights, you don't have any rights? So um, learning about common law and uh, statutory law and the difference um, is very important to you knowing your rights. Then you'll learn about principles of giving. Now, while we were in the middle of uh, the challenge, Rick told us, um, I need three volunteers. I'm sorry, five volunteers. I, he needed five volunteers um, and uh, he said, I'll let you know when I need you to raise your hand. First five people will be the people chosen. So he talks a little bit more. Uh, then he finally comes to the point where he says, all right, um, I'm going to count to three. Raise your hand. Okay. And fortunately, I was one of the first five. Yes. Um so up to this point, we're just volunteering. We don't know what's going on. So he asks us um, individually, do you know someone uh, who has cancer? And um, he asked each of the, us that. And I, maybe three people said yes, they knew someone personally. A couple said that they did not know anyone. So at this point, he tells us, well, uh, I'm going to give each of you $500 to give to someone that you know with cancer. If you don't know someone personally, you can donate it to a um, uh, an organization uh, that um, addresses cancer. Um, then he told us to put our um, cash app address uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, we did that. And then he said, uh, told the other people, uh, make a donation to one of these people so that they can give it to the person that they know who has cancer. I was blessed to be able to bless one of my classmates and long, uh, um, longtime friends, childhood friends, with six hundred and fifty dollars from Rick and the financial IQ challenge. Now, what do you think about that? I can't wait to be able to bless people in that way. To be blessed. To be blessed. Uh, to bless other people. Well, as I said before, there is a solution to the problem of uh, insufficient finances. Okay? The solution is the irrevocable tax-free trust. I'm only going to say a couple of things about that. Okay, one, I'm going to say um, this is a quote you probably know where it's from. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness 
and hidden riches of secret places. We've heard that we should be getting back all that was taken from us. Okay? And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to tell you about this or say about the irrevocable tax-free trust is that it's lawful, it's legal, and it's lasting. So I, I, I have been really, really, really excited about this. And um, so excited that I wrote a poem. Okay, and I'm going to read it. It's really um, a haiku. Okay, and a haiku is a poem with three lines. And my poem that I want to share with you is, In 2023, I'm living my life differently. I've gained my freedom and my legacy too. I'm living my life tax-free. Are you? And I'd like to change that too. I'm living my life tax-free. And so can you. I'm Dr. Beverly Allen. I am more than 50 and loving it. Have a wonderful day. Blessings, blessings, and more blessings. Time. So that sounds that sounds reasonable. Okay, because this guy, this guy was uh, he's like, I don't want to do, I don't want to take no risk. Now it <laughs> sounds reasonable uh, from the outside looking in when you're talking about risk versus reward. It seems like a, mute yourself, mute yourself. Make sure you mute yourself. Whoever just came in, make sure you mute yourself. So it sounds like a reasonable way to think. But it's so unreasonable and it's so not like God and it's so phony and it's so fake and it's so idea that you can give God back what he gave you. And I'm telling you that that idea is from the pit of hell. That idea didn't come from heaven. That's a sensual idea. That ain't no wisdom that came from above. That's your nutty butt thinking you're going to get away with something. That's what time that is. You thinking that God going to give you the amazing capacity to double up and then you're just going to give God back what he gave you. That ain't how God get down. And if you read the 25th chapter of Matthew, you know better. You know, because it's Jesus talking. These words are written in red. Why? Why? Because it's written in blood, baby. All right? And Jesus is a covenant type of God. So when you really think that you're going to come around here being nickel slick, that's why I don't let people stroke me. Why? Because I got the spirit of Jesus Christ. So when you start talking to me, and I know you don't want to do no work, and you start saying things like, hey, bro, Rick, man, you could really sing. I say, Negro, get to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point, right? Why? Because I know whatever you're getting ready, a bunch of lies about to come up next. Why? Because you're trying to stroke me. And the reason y'all let people stroke you is because you ain't working to your full capacity. But if you was working to your full capacity, people wouldn't be able to stroke you. Why? Because don't, don't tell me nothing about me. I already know about me. All right. Are you listening to me? And when people roll up on you and they start stroking you, the only reason that that stuff feel good is because they're telling you stuff about yourself. You know, you ain't living up to. But when you know you're living up to something and somebody come and tell you about you, you like you ain't told me nothing. Oh, with fear. You just, it just paralyzes. You. So you can't make a move. Why? Because you don't believe it's going to be worth your time. We're live, so, sir. OK, very good. So everybody wave to the Facebook group. How you guys doing on Facebook? God bless. You. Hey, man, I'm just very excited about the financial IQ. I really want to just get this information, this knowledge, and I'm playing on my plan to share with everyone I can, my family, friends, anyone that is willing to listen. Because, man, I did not know that something like this ever existed. And so I thank you guys for what you're doing, and I look forward to being a member of the class. God bless. Thank you. So move around and tell your man, I said, hell to the now, I can't do nothing for you. So a man came back and told David, they said, man, he threw us out. It was embarrassing. But Papa, I would say, he say, embarrassing. Say, man, straight up embarrassing. They say, they, they threw us out, man. He said, we ain't got nothing coming. He said, so what? He said, they threw you out. He said, man, mount them up. He said, mount them up, doc. He said, mount them up. And let's just go down there and kill them and take all the stuff. He said, everybody. He said, mount them up. Now, you know, David's a, a straight up warrior. This little punk ain't got no arm. Is he a knucklehead or a knucklehead? He ain't got no sense. He think he finna get, he think he finna ride. He think he finna get away with that. He gonna tell David to ride out. So David said, strap him up. In the meantime, his wife, Abigail, come home. 
One of the servants said, hey, listen, your husband nutty as a box of rocks. David just sent his men down here and asked for a little something. He said, just bring him off a little bit of that Kit Kat bar. And he told him to go to hell. He said, man, he about to come kill us all, including you, baby. You better bounce. You better get down there quick. She said, man, let me stack them up and get me on the first camel smoking. So she jumped on one of them. I don't know if she rode a camel or what. That's my imagination. Anyway, she she jumped on something, all right? She got the first the first vehicle available. You dig what I'm saying? And stupid out there into the middle of the, of, the, of the wilderness and said, and got on her knees and told David, she said, I'm so sorry. I was not at the crib when you came by. My husband, his name is Nabal, which means folly, and he's a complete idiot. Don't come kill us all because you're a gangster, a Holy Ghost gangster, and I know you got the right to kill us, and I know you're going to be the next king. So I tell you what, don't kill us. Don't come and kill us. Ignore him. He's an idiot. All right. I'm married to him, but I'm married to an idiot. All right. Don't wave at me if you're married to an idiot. Just think about what I'm saying. All right. So <laughs> you ain't got good sis. He ain't got good sons. He ain't got good sons. But don't, don't kill us. Please don't kill us. All right. Show some dog old mercy. And David. My name is Nicole West. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I currently reside in the Northwest suburbs at this time. I work in an admin role with the company that I work for. I work directly with accounts payable and receivable. I also began my own small business, and I'm going to be launching more into that this year. Uh, I was introduced to this opportunity by my aunt, and I'm just excited to be a part of it.